Okay, salam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Mind Heist episode uh, 98. In this episode, as you can see, I've replaced uh, Muhammad with uh, a uh, uh, a black room and a face in it. <laughs> <laughs> salam alaikum Hussein. This is salam Hussein. Alaikum. Our, alaikum salam warahmatullahi So our guest today is Hussein. Uh, we're gonna. I'm not gonna actually introduce you, Hussein, because. Uh, I think in the episode, we're going to learn about you. Even I know I'm going to learn about you because there's, there's many things that uh, I haven't asked you about, which I'm curious about. So I think it's going to be a very good episode because, you know, when you have uh, natural curiosity, then you become yeah. a good like interviewer, you know. So, so to give a little, in, uh, you know, a uh, little context. So obviously we know each other through like business. Uh, my company did business with your previous yeah. employer and yes, uh, yes. <laughs> and um, uh, what else we're both in Istanbul right now obviously you've yes, been in Istanbul for uh, over a year now correct yeah yeah yes, exactly and yeah. Uh, you're originally from Jordan you born in yes. Jordan I was born in Jordan yes yeah. yes I'm born, born and raised born and raised but mm. then I, I left around like uh, 18 19 19 years mm -hmm. old I left to the Gulf and you know started yeah yeah okay work. so so start start us off or start me off actually because really we're just talking here you know and, and i think people will enjoy it yeah, and benefit yeah. as well so start me off like okay you were born in amman and yeah. um you were there till you said you were about 18 so like what was your kind of upbringing like and now that you're obviously older and you've lived in many places how do you view your upbringing yeah yeah, well, uh, I think I think my upbringing specifically was was just a normal uh, Muslim kind of upbringing, where well, basically not the typical Muslim upbringing that I hear about in general. Like, you know, because we we're, we're born Muslims, basically. So <clears throat> uh, my family, you know, the father and mother is busy at work, and mm -hmm. we're we're in an Islamic school and. You know, but but it's not exactly we weren't really up brought to to follow certain aspects of the sunnah we were just doing the culture thing yeah right yeah and by by the age of like 18 19 i basically i i i, I was fed up with schooling basically mm. and i didn't want to continue uh, mm. with with university mm. so and and well it was pretty obvious for my parents that I didn't I, I wasn't mm. interested in schooling right okay so and you went to a father, public school normal school yeah uh, no no I was in private school actually oh, actually wow. one of the best private schools in in, mm. in Jordan but uh, mm. the, I, I wasn't interested in in the way that that education played out right so uh, I just wanted and from early ages I was trying to like I wanted to do some business I wanted to do some work I worked at a convenience store and uh, I made some money on the side. I sold clothes. Uh, I used to like go to shops, see some nice clothes. I, I would buy it and sell it to somebody else. I was doing this thing. I mm. wasn't like, uh, I was trying to just, I wanted to make money and I wanted yeah. to like live off myself. Mashallah. So, uh, and then by, by the age of 18, I just basically, I, I wasn't interested even in Jordan. Mm. So I got an opportunity to work uh, in Saudi mm. uh, for a travel agency. Mm. But I didn't know anything about the, the, the travel industry. I had some yeah. training at the beginning before, before I left. Mm. And then I just left off there and I got the training in Saudi and I, I started working Mm. Uh, from then on mm. and uh, mm. tourism i stayed in tourism like for almost like 15 years after that wow. mm. no what what okay did you both your parents work uh at, at the beginning yes and mm. all until like my father was 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 in public relations with the okay. bank oh. and my mother was a teacher mm. okay so the teacher part was a bit not uh... <laughs> compatible <laughs> yes. okay yeah she 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 didn't like the fact that I didn't want schooling, right? Yeah. She, she wanted me like because my all my other brothers were like A students. They're like oh. the engineers and doctors, and mm. like uh, you know they scored uh, full mm. scores in Mashallah. high school and yeah. stuff like this. Yeah. So I was a different mm. one. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but uh, later on, my my mother retired <clears throat> so that she could take care of the 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 younger ones, well, yeah. starting from me and. Yeah, I have two other brother and sister younger ah. than me. So you're the middle one of the middle child. Yeah, I'm I'm the middle. Yeah, yeah. there's two uh, 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 older and two younger. Mm. Yeah. Did you know, like, uh, 
the middle children tend to be more independent, especially if you have three children, three siblings, yes. the middle yeah. one, like they don't get the special attention like the older one does. <clears throat> and they don't get yeah. that spoiling that the youngest one gets. And they kind of forced to... I, I forced the attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you get I that reaction it. as well sometimes. Yeah. 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 So, so the middle one, sometimes they, they, they just kind of carve out their own path sometimes. Um, that's, yeah. the, that's a trend, apparently. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. so you were kind yeah. of fed up of school yeah. and the way that was working. But what about Jordan? You said even Jordan, you were fed up with Jordan. Why is that? Um, I, I didn't see any... Uh, real real opportunities in it. it it was a small country it had this uh, certain system that you have to go through so you can be hired or mm. you know get a job or whatever i wasn't like i i i, I believed in jobs right but I, I i knew that it wasn't the path that i wanted to take but i needed the experience obviously so that's why i knew kind of like it it kind of naturally made sense to me that well my 20s i need to carve up as much experience as as possible mm. from whatever job i would i would be mm. getting and th that's what i spent most of my 20s until the i think i i, th I think i until 29 years old this is when i really took off and started to like speak with like uh, business partners you know and you know put on my my experience uh, up front you know showing mm. people that i have enough experience so i can take up the a different venture because you know the tourism industry as well I was in this business. The, the tourism industry is, is the travel agency business is very hard to to change. So I, I had different ideas. I had new ideas that I wanted to bring on, but uh, I, I, it took me time till I find the proper like kind of like partner who would invest in this. And finally, it happened around like when I was twenty nine years old. Yeah, like ten years ago, basically. Okay, so so when you. Um when you went to get that you got that first job in saudi you you, yeah. you worked basically 10 years in from that uh time yeah but but it wasn't like in saudi only i, I worked yeah, exactly. in saudi so i wanted you yeah. to sh share like what were the different jobs in that yeah. time period it, it was places. in the same industry mm. yeah it was always in the same industry i, I was a kind of like a travel agent okay uh, but the job title kept changing so mm. sometimes i would be like booking airline tickets sometimes it would be like uh, holiday packages mm -hmm. sometimes honeymooners mm -hmm. and uh, you know it entitled me to travel around you know and uh, see different packages in asia and uh, you know as a travel agent you need to travel and see like the oh, airlines really? also invite okay. you yeah mm. yeah and you get you get special discounts like okay. uh, like as a travel agent i would pay only like kind of like 10 percent of the airline ticket price wow but okay. but without a booked seat so you have to go and take your risk that's why usually in the low season we we, we would travel in the low season not in the high season because in the high ah. season there, there won't be any seats mm -hmm, left right mm -hmm. so so i did in i was in saudi for a while i think for it was for uh, three years mm -hmm. and then Riyadh i went or back Jeddah or? in in khubar oh, okay oh. in khubar the mam it's the eastern oh. part it's very close to bahrain Basically, yeah. we used to operate like two uh, two airports because people from Bahrain, from from Khubar, they would travel either from Khubar Airport or Bahrain Airport. It's the same same thing. Yeah. So after that, I uh, uh, after two three three years, I went back to Jordan. I had a job uh, opportunity with a very kind of like a high end travel agency. Uh, you know about it, mm. <laughs> and I, I worked with them actually in two thousand. It was two thousand six. I remember, yeah, something like 2006, I worked with them till 2008. Mm -hmm. And then from 2008, I went to uh, UAE. Mm -hmm. In UAE, I actually wanted to work something different. I got, because I, wa I wasn't getting what I wanted from the travel industry. I, I That change that I was looking for, I wasn't getting it. Mm -hmm. So I went to the UAE and I wanted to change the whole industry. I, I went into banking, which, is, okay. which was the worst. <laughs> option I, I would ever really wow. choose wow. and I, I immediately hated it like wow. I, I didn't even spend a month in it wow. and uh, when I was there mm. so I was talking with this one one of my friends he was quite like his family is like uh, like financially uh, like comfortable mm. and he was uh, he had the same mentality he didn't want any jobs and he wanted some kind of like a business venture 
he had the education. He, he graduated even from Miguel in, in, in Canada, mm-hmm. but he didn't have the experience, right? He, he had the money. Uh, he had the access for money. He wanted some kind of experience, but he wanted some kind of industry like related to business and stuff. So he told me, that, you know, before you come back to Jordan, while in your, you're in the UAE, why don't you just check things out for me? Maybe there's a opportunity for me that I can like come and, uh, you know, just, mm. he wanted me to do some research. So I told yeah. him, I'll be honest with you, I, you know, I can't advise you anything except it's something that I understand. Yeah. Uh, about you know, I I wanted to take this opportunity, and I told him, if you really want my uh, my advice, my opinion, the only thing I can advise you in is about tourism, you know, because that's the only thing that I understand. So he told me what 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 do you have on your plate, mm. and I told him what I was imagining, and you know, UAE being even in like it was always the destination that promotes itself touristically, right? Mm. So I I kind of like. Uh, I gave him my idea and uh, basically he he hopped on he he, he agreed it and uh, we got the finances and I came back to Jordan just for like like the visa issues and do th- certain things and when then we took off in 2000 we, we, 2008 we started uh, mm-hmm. establishing the business in Dubai. Yeah. Mm-hmm. so living in Saudi UAE you went also back to Jordan what do you find the differences between uh, the Gulf and uh, Jordan Mm, uh, like they have a different, they had a, they have a different culture. They're they're more like uh, I mean we're all Arabs in in general. There's the, but there's, there's there's these like small cultural issues mm-hmm. where I think it's more of a social status. Is you know the the Saudis they're a bit they're, they're a bit different. Even each Gulf country is each of them are a bit different from each other obviously because of the size of the country so in saudi because it's so huge mm. so you'd meet really different kinds of people yeah, you would yeah. meet the modest you would meet the the snobby <laughs> you would meet all kinds of like different people in the uae it's the, the rare thing is to for you to 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 meet and be friend with a local yeah, because yeah. they're the minority there yeah? Yeah, yeah so most of my most of the people who would you meet is like uh, foreigners basically mm-hmm. uh, but I had more genuine relationships in in Saudi than in the UAE, for example. Mm. Uh, I felt the UAE is a bit more like it's all like business mm-hmm. interest re- related. There's it's mm. like strictly business, superficial. Even the friendship levels, yeah. Mm. It's, it, I didn't feel like there were real relationships in the UAE. Really, it, mm. it kind of like reflected the country itself because you know the whole country was basically you know, twenty years ago. It was it was nothing, you know. Mm-hmm. So so that that it, it kind of like I felt like it, it had this reflection. It, it mm. was fun. It was fun. It was a lot of like a good experience. There's a lot of business uh, yeah. going on there, but uh, something it, it wasn't some. It wasn't a place that I would really spend my whole life in. Mm-hmm. So you went Jordan. from Jordan, Jordan, yeah. you, uh, you felt there wasn't opportunity there and you went to yeah. UAE where there's a lot of opportunity, a but lot. you still yeah, something but... else was lacking, you know, so it's always like, yeah, uh, that, that, the, what green. was existing in Jordan. Yeah. Mm. What was existing in Jordan wasn't in the UAE and what was in the UAE <laughs> wasn't in Jordan. So I, I, I wanted to still, you know, find this. Uh, combination mm-hmm. and this is uh, in the UAE uh, this is where I met my my wife okay uh, and she she she, she be, you know in the UAE it's like uh, all kinds of nationalities so my wife yeah. is, is Japanese so I, mm-hmm. I met her in in the UAE okay and, uh, and so you spoke she was doing English at that time yeah when yeah, did you most, learn English of, uh, in school I, I okay. was in school and I used to like uh, watch a lot of movies mm. you know subtitles movies mm. Mm. I didn't get it from school okay. but uh, the schooling system didn't really gave me that language aspect it's mm. it's my own like kind of like personal interest yeah. in the west and in the movies uh, I had I have cousin American cousins mm. so also every summer we used to like travel to the to the US and you know I think it rubbed off basically mm. <laughs> so, okay Good, yeah, bit. yeah. So, so when yeah, you met your wife, UAE, I guess you were talking is... to her in Jap- uh, not in Japanese, in English. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Even t- till today, I'm not speaking Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So it was it was in English. It was in mm. English, purely mm. in English. And uh, but she, she, the good thing is because Japanese they don't speak English. Mm. But the, my luck, Alhamdulillah, she she studied English in the university. 
Oh, so she okay. majored in English in university. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. why she can speak. Mm-hmm. And she was in the UAE for like, she even did this, uh, this uh, kind of like a supplement business. She had the, all these health supplement uh, products coming from the Malaysia and stuff like this in Malaysia and in, 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 in uh, Thailand. Mm-hmm. So she was doing that business. And, you know, supplement business is always good wherever you go. Mm-hmm. And then from then on, you know, I didn't know much about like Asia or my, mm. my, my business venture was mainly in the Middle East, right? Yeah. So uh, she suggested to me that before, because we were doing this business and we were trying to operate this business and it was like, it, it was so hard to really open a business in the UAE mm. at that time. Yeah. So after like a couple of years, imagine we took two years to mm. to, to license, to make the wow. license for the business. Mm. Two years, five licenses. Wow. One of them is an impossible license. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Civil aviation license, ah. they would only give it to a sheikh mm. there. Mm. So we had to bring in a partner that mm. is a sheikh basically mm. so we can get this. Anyways, so once we were like almost ready and we're going to start the business, she suggested that you know, let's 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 go somewhere. Let's travel somewhere since you're gonna be stuck and busy for at least a couple of years. You know. Yeah. So I thought, okay, where where would you like uh, to go? It's like, let's go to Thailand. Mm. And that trip changed everything in my life. Mm. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> everything. Mm. I mean, yeah. because I went there. You know, I was in the in the mentality that I wanted. You know, I'm going for a vacation, and coming back. Mm-hmm. But what I, I what I ended up having is a, a, I had this cultural shock mm-hmm. where, you know, is this really like so people live in a different like people are happy there. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> so, you know, it was really very I mean, uh, <clears throat> put aside the fact that it's a Buddhist country. Mm unfortunately mm. uh, but uh, the the people there the way they deal with you the way the the, the smiling the, the the generosity the the hospitality all these like because i'm working in the tourism industry you know the hospitality is, wow. is in the core of my business yeah and they had this thing naturally mm. i was shocked mm. because you know for us in the hospitality industry you have to fake up everything you have mm. to you know put up a smile you have to deal with Customers, you know how it is in the yeah. hospitality in the UAE. Mm. It's not, it's not from inside. It's never from inside. It's it, that's why it's called a, an industry. It's a, it's a business. Okay. But what I saw in Thailand, it's really natural, wow. and that shocked me. Mm. I was, I was really shocked. I mm. came back to from that vacation. I came back. Even my partner looked at me. The first thing he saw when he saw me, he said, "You know, you, you, your your mind and heart is still in Thailand." You know? <laughs> he wow. really could see it. I, wow. And I couldn't, and we broke off. We broke off the partnership only three months after that. Wow! How long I did took, you stay I in left, Thailand for that first trip? Uh, first trip only like uh, ten days. Okay, yeah. Now, ten Hussein, days. you have to tell me this though, because you know Arabs are known for hospitality and generosity. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And I'm yeah. sure, obviously, when you're, even if you're Arab, you know that that's something that you're proud of. That uh, alhamdulillah from. Back in the day from Jahiliya yeah. even, the, yes. there is that. Yeah. Okay, so you're aware yeah. of it. Um, and now, you're, but you're saying you went to Thailand and you were shocked and it was like positive. So, you know, are they more you know, generous and hospi- hospitable than Arabs or what, what's the it's, deal? No, it's, it's, it's not about the generosity. It's, it's mm. more of the, 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 the feeling of comfort. You know, when you're, when you're a guest at, okay. uh, at somebody else's house, mm-hmm. you still have this feeling that you're kind of like, not, not a burden, yeah. but you know, you, you, I mean, you can't stay there forever. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, there's yeah. certain limits as well. Yeah. That's, you know, he is hospitable. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and he's generous with you, but in Thailand, you would, you would, you feel, you're, you're feeling welcomed. Mm. It's very different. So you I mean, say it's, it's Arab, better in that sense than uh, in Jordan or Saudi Arabia. Because because you don't feel like I felt like I didn't I don't want to even you know why because in Thailand I felt so comfortable that I wouldn't mind uh, doing anything to just stay there. Mm. Where in 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 UAE you mm. have a certain status social status uh, people uh, degrees and all these things that you have to live up to. Mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. so i when i'm when i'm sitting with uh, with my business partner i have to be in a certain uh, mentality or status yeah. or so regardless if he's a, a generous guy or not. same mm-hmm. thing with the shakes yeah 
But in mm. Thailand, you know, because you know, you could be sitting with the next multimillionaire, but you're sitting in a plastic chair and, uh, <laughs> mm. and having a, a like a, a normal meal, and it's it's very very normal. But at the same time, they don't they don't have this social uh, I don't know how you call it social separation. You, like okay. everybody is the same. Everybody's like regardless, they're 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 they're, they're rich or they're poor. Mm. They have this. Uh, kind of like a concept to life you know okay. they're, they're like they're living their life they're doing what they can do and they're and it's not kind of like bothering them you don't see like because he has some issues and stuff that he, he's reflecting it back on you when he's okay. welcoming you he's really really welcoming you and mm. they do this extra mile they take this extra mile mm. add to that they don't have the like they have these resorts for example the resort that i was staying in that's another shock that i you know from a hospitality industry coming from a hospitality industry when when i'm entering a resort it's it has to be classified like four stars five stars three stars regardless mm. in thailand they have a whole new level they have it's not even classified there's no stars mm. but it's it's very luxurious mm. and it's very cheap so i was mm. staying in this like a uh, not the, it's a two-story bungalow. It's very beautiful, very nicely finished. I was paying fifteen dollars a night. <laughs> so it didn't make sense as well. Wow. Yeah. yeah it, because for me, that at least I need to pay like one hundred fifty. Coming from the UAE, it's one hundred fifty dollars. Mm. <laughs> the, the the value. So there's yeah. this there's this value you get from Thailand mm. that. Uh, that uh, you can't put money on uh, mm -hmm. on top of it. Mm -hmm. That's that's what, the main thing. What year was this when you you first went? Uh, the, the visit or the, the, for yeah, the, the visit, visit. Yeah. Uh, two, it was 2010 yeah 2000 yeah two, uh, the visit and the moving was very close to each other like yeah, 2010 yeah, yeah. okay because i was gonna say maybe yeah, 2010 it was end of 2000 all of the tourists went and stuff but tourists have been going there for decades i suppose from the west so yeah and even today yeah. it's still cheap isn't it uh, right it is it is but I, it was pretty cheap when i went there yeah <laughs> so, yeah yeah obviously it probably has gone up but it's you know still relatively cheap okay yeah. cool so still, so you still were married is. at that point right you were married and and then you moved to thailand right I, I, we were married like a civil marriage so she was still she wasn't muslim okay at the time mm. I, I i was barely muslim as well mm. <laughs> mm. So, so we, we had this like a civil civil marriage, right? Just for like paperwork and stuff. Yeah. And then this is when we moved there. Uh, see, that's the part where everything changed for me because I didn't feel like I'm constrained with like cultural issues. Yeah. So I had enough time to discover myself. Mm. Yeah. I was so busy the past mm. 10 years. Mm. In the in the Saudi and Jordan and UAE in the business, I wanted to make myself, but I was so busy because of the way I was abroad as well. Mm. I didn't have any focus on really who I am and mm. why am I here, right? Okay. These like fundamental questions. So when I went to Thailand because it was cheap, and it, I know I had enough money to like survive. And, uh, you know, I started to want to discover myself. So I'm, I'm in Thailand. I don't have the language. I need to start like, discovering what I need to do. Yeah. So this is when I started to do this online, uh, you know, online gigs. I, I went to like, I discovered, you know, now it's called Upwork, but it was, yeah. it was Odesk at that yeah. time. Yeah. When I was, yeah. Odesk so I, and I discovered, e -lance. E -lance? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so, <laughs> so I started to pick up jobs from there, like translation yeah. jobs. Yeah. And this is when it started to get interesting because I had this enough time mm -hmm. to to you know the, to reflect on myself and what I want to do and this woman what what we want to do, mm -hmm. and this is where it really got interesting. I yeah. I received a job, mm -hmm. a, a translation job for a, a TV show, a very famous TV show in in the Arab world. Mm -hmm. It's called Al Wa'd Al Haq. Okay. The, it rings the, a bell. True promise. Mm. Yeah. It rings it, a it bell. Was, it I was, feel like I've heard of it. It was it was aired in Sharjah's TV. Okay. Mm. Doctor Omar Abdul Latif, if you've okay. heard about him. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Abdul Kafi, but no, I don't know Abdul Latif. Mm. Abdul Kafi, sorry, Abdul Kafi, sorry. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay, then I do know. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's. Yeah. Yes, that that program. It was they sent it to me to make the subtitles, the translation. Mm. If well, it's in Arabic, 
and they needed somebody to do the English. Yeah. And that, my friend, <laughs> mm. changed my life before anybody else's. <laughs> okay, subhanAllah. So, so this, you got free, yeah, you got so paid I, to, to receive da'wah from Dr. Abdul Kafi. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was, and it was, no, it's not, it's not just, I'm not just watching the, the, the show, I'm translating word yeah. by word, you know. You have to think <laughs> deeply about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, subhanAllah. I, and and from then on, it's like everything changed really. Mm. And then, but my wife was still not. Mm. Uh, but she, knowing me from previously and how it's like, I was like kind of like I don't change. It's not easy for a person to hundred and eighty percent change. But when yeah. she saw that change, you know, from from A to Z, you know, it's mm. some, it's a totally different. It's the same person, yeah. but it's like a, now he's like committed and he's. Mm. It's like praying and stuff and you know, mm. what is this so mm. she started to be curious mm. and then subhanallah this is when uh, uh, mm. one small story that made the, the whole difference for, with her is that mm. we were we were walking around in in thailand and i there was a asr prayer mm -hmm. and there was a message alhamdulillah in thailand there's a lot of messages as well i mean mm. i think there's almost like 15 million muslims in thailand so it's not it's wow. not something like mm. yeah they're, they're quite a good percentage mm. in in thailand so I went into this masjid, I prayed the Asr, she was waiting for me outside. Mm -hmm. And then when I came out, I saw like a book, like a bookshop, uh, bookshop sells also caps and mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of these things. Yeah. I went in, I went, I was curious what, what he has. Yeah. And I found the Quran mm -hmm. that is an English translation. So mm -hmm. it's a, a, an Arabic and an English translation. Yeah. So I bought it mm -hmm. and I gave it to her. Mm. And I told her read because I was I was relatively okay. I was born Muslim, but I was relatively new for mm. doing dawah. I didn't mm. know what to do, where where to where to go, what what can I do with her? Yeah. What's even the the the, the Sharia mm. status between us? You know. Mm. So I gave her the book and I told her, you know, here here, here you go, <laughs> read mm. it. Mm. So and a few days later, mm. I remember coming down. Uh, uh, to pray uh, Fajr in the house where we were living and I mm. saw her sitting and she was reading it mm. and she I asked her what are you reading she told me the first uh, chapter this mm. Al-Baqarah mm. of course she was reading the the, the, the English version I yeah. told her so what do you think it's totally you know I uh, uh, it's, it's very simple because Japanese they teach them in school in their schooling system they teach them uh, about Christianity mm -hmm. you know because they were occupied kind of like by the US. So so she knows about these stories about Adam and how okay. and all these, but she says, you know, their story, their virgin doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. This one, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I, but she told me, I want to ask you a very interesting question. She, mm -hmm. And this question really was, was a slap on my face. She told me, mm -hmm. uh, because she, she was living in the U in, in Saudi and UAE. So she, she, she interacted with Muslims for quite a few years. Yeah. She said, you Muslims, you, you don't, you don't read Quran? <laughs> so she asked me this question. She, she's like, I told her, look, to be honest with you, we, uh, the majority, unfortunately, uh, they don't, they don't. They don't because she said, what's inside this, this Quran is different from what I've seen. Uh, I mean, there's no, mm, there's so, so different. Yeah, like yeah, Muslims, right. they don't represent the Quran. Mm, yeah. yeah. So from that mm. on, she started to be interested in stuff. And subhanAllah, after I think, uh, of months she uh, she she said the shahada alhamdulillah alhamdulillah rabbil alamin that's that's crazy uh, i mean it's it must be yeah. interesting for your <laughs> for your relationship right because you were like you said you were one way and then she saw you change and, and that's always an awkward period isn't it yes when you're like that, that, you're contradicting yourself what you used to do like a couple months ago, now you're saying, oh, that's yeah. completely wrong, for example. And it, yes. you, yeah. you, you feel, I'm guessing you feel like a bit hypocritical, right? But It, um, it, was, it was just, for, for me, for mm. me, it was just like, I, I we kind of like knew like what was, because I, this was wrong and mm -hmm. now it's right, you know? So for example, in terms of like uh, drinking, for example. So yeah. drinking, even, even the one who drinks, and not Muslim, he knows it's wrong. Mm. <laughs> he knows it's, it's bad for you, you know? Okay, and that's yeah. the, the what I tried to show or what, what I, I kind of like pre represented when, uh, when I kind of like reverted is that actually what, it, what made sense is that, you know, you need to pray, 
you need to eat healthy, you need to treat people better, you need to be less angry, these kinds of things. Because she also saw the reflection that I'm less angry, I'm less anxious, I'm, I don't worry as much as before. These mm -hmm. kind of things, this relationship, this five daily prayers, the fasting alone, the fasting was a, a whole new level uh, uh, story. You know, it, it was a, something very, because, because also in the Japanese, they're, they're Buddhist in, in nature, right? Yeah. So they know about these like holistic kind of treatments and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, that's also what helped even in Thailand, you know. Mm, they have some of these, uh, you could say spiritual practices. They have fasting. Many, they, yeah. Which many religions yeah, yeah, um, they, they, kind of adopt, but obviously they do it for whatever yeah. reason they have. And Muslims, we do it because, you know, we have it from Allah, from the Prophet yeah. Sallam and all of that. So, yeah, there's an awareness that yes. there's something good yeah. about this, exactly. like fasting, for example, isn't there? Uh, but yes. Hussein, you know, in, yes. in Japan, yes. yeah. is it like, because I thought the religion in Japan is Shintoism. Is that just like similar to Buddhism? What's the deal? Or is Shintoism the political thing? I don't it's, know. it's 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 no it's you see what what i'll tell you what the japanese are japanese they're basically they're like uh europe now christian europe now okay. so they they tell they they say that they're christians but they don't practice yeah so for japanese they they say they're they're buddhist mm -hmm. but they don't practice okay they don't believe in it they're, they're mm -hmm. kind of like you know how how atheists, uh, atheist uh, Christians are a lot of them are actually atheists yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's part of so their now, culture and tradition, but not part of their belief and actions, yeah. basically. Yeah, exactly. It's the same thing in in Japan, mm -hmm. and it's becoming like kind of like a culture. They even they, the funny thing is they they celebrate Christmas. Mm. Okay. <laughs> As a cultural issue, it's not it's not about religion. Yeah. So what they don't, what the Japanese are, they don't have a religion actually. Mm. The Shinto is something, something for the for the priests. So it's like oh. a higher level. Oh, okay. Like 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 the monks, like the yeah, monks yeah. in in the Buddhism, right? Yeah, so yeah. they, if they have a like a, a a celebration or something, they go and they visit the temple and they put the, all these flowers and stuff. But it's there's not exactly a practice like it is in Buddhism, for example. Mm -hmm. They don't practice Buddhism, actually, mm -hmm. not at mm -hmm. all. So mm -hmm. it's a totally different uh, mm -hmm. thing so, from Buddhism, really. Uh -huh. And, you know, when you, so now you've married someone from, I would say Japan is a very unique culture. Obviously, it shares yeah. some uh, aspects with uh, places like Korea, Malaysia. I've seen, I've seen that, but yeah. it seems quite unique. And uh, I think... You know, Japanese, uh, from what I know, and many people say, you know, they have some of the best uh, manners um, and kind of they're very clean and, the, high, you know, and orderly. Yes, people, because, right? because of the schooling system. It's very good. The schooling system uh -huh. is very powerful. Uh-huh, uh-huh. They, yes, they so, really teach them manners from... So you're against the, the school the system, but the the Japanese school system <laughs> formed your wife to be good. <laughs> I, it, it was... If, if, it, if, it, if it's Muslim, believe me, I would put them in there because really they follow strict rules in terms of like what they need to educate their kids and how their kids need to be upbrought from from like from early years. Like uh, and there, there's a lot of focus on modesty. There's a lot of focus on uh, helping others. There's a lot of uh, like uh, like really helping others, respecting parents, respecting the elderly. These like fundamentals which we have in the religion yeah. in Islam, they have them, but in the culture. So it's yeah. a culture for them. It's a cultural thing. It doesn't have any spiritual connection. Yeah. So that's yeah. why they actually the, the what, what the problem happens is that they grow up with such uh, so many cultural values, but at the same time they don't believe in them because there's no. Uh, spiritual aspect yeah. to it. So, the only thing holding them to those values is the fact that it's the social norm and social pressure. Yes. Yes. And if, if, if you go against it, you'll be outcasted. Yeah, exactly. But over time, over decades, uh, things change, isn't it? Like we saw that in, in America, for example, um, there, there used to be uh, elements of if, you're, if you do that, if you have a different value to us in that, then you'd be outcast again, the, the social yes. pressure. But over time, that has been eroded to the level yeah. now where now in America, like it's almost you can't, um, no one is bound to any common yes. values, right? Because Not it, in Japan. <laughs> because freedom is like 
absolute in yeah. America. You must have freedom yes. to have whatever values you choose. But You're right. uh, most of the world, it's not like that. But what, yeah. I'm, what I'm saying is in Japan, if, although those values are very good, we can say there is room for them to be eroded because it's not linked to some kind of higher message or you know something like that. Yeah, but but they don't. Yeah, they're still stuck. <laughs> for now. Yeah, least. they're still yeah. very stuck with the culture. Mm, much very so. much so. Mm, mm. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. You mm. you. I mean, my wife even left Japan because of that. Mm. Because there's so much like you have to really live up to everybody's expectation. Yeah. Even you want very interesting information. Mm. The the she there is a specific way till today specific way that she needs to uh, speak when it's when she's addressing her father and her mother mm. there's certain subjects mm. she cannot open with them yeah. there's certain ways of speech she cannot mm. do even with like every part of her family like for her uh, grandmother there's a way that she needs to speak with her mm. with her father it's the same way wow. so like Really, they, there's there's a, like a stand, there's a channel, right? Mm. If she doesn't speak within that channel with her yeah. father, yeah. the funny thing is her father will not understand. It's like he, she's speaking a different language with him. Wow! Really, it's really that complicated. Crazy. The, the, as I really always when I see her speak with her parents or with her family, there is a specific way mm. that she's speaking with them. So you and can tell the not, difference even though you don't know Japanese. Yes. Because it's so polite and it's mm. so like you know there's there's, wow. a, there's a standard uh, mm. even the way that uh, she greets, the way that she uh, she says, says goodbye, the way that uh, she opens a specific subject with them, she like uh, really I mean I, I'll give you okay I'll I'll give you a very interesting information. Mm. Alhamdulillah, she is now pregnant with my fourth, right? Mm, that Alhamdulillah. So that should be something new like uh, good news to share yeah. with your parents right yeah, yeah. till today she didn't tell them yet okay <laughs> why because yeah, why? she knows hmm. they would feel sorry for her okay because in japanese culture if you have two more more than two kids that's too much for them they mm. won't understand it wow. yeah it's too much mm. yeah so so she doesn't want them to feel sorry for her so wow. she doesn't tell them wow. until it's too late basically <laughs> Is that, is that, yeah. It's already too late for saying that. <laughs> I know, but it's <laughs> wow, crazy. Yeah, I mean that's how yeah. built in it is in the culture that yeah yes. she can't. It's so too that, that's why Japan has so many um, old people, isn't it? So because well, yeah. they can't have more than two kids, which means they can't grow the population <laughs> because yes. you're just two people. You're having yeah. two kids, so you're just replacing yeah. yourself. You're not yeah, you're not exactly. growing the population exactly. Yeah. Also, the yeah, the, and and there's really really it's there's so many like the and if you go to Japan, uh, I mean a lot of people are fascinated by the culture and how it's very organized and stuff. But actually, what I've been hearing from her, I, I never went to, uh, but it's it it's like they're robots basically. Mm -hmm. They're ro they're just following protocol. Even yeah. she say when you go to the metro, then in the metro or the subway or the tunnel is the most active and most noisy place of all mm -hmm. places, you know, because yeah. people are going, coming and talking. Only in Japan, it's like, you know, it's, it's an, an ant, you know, ants <laughs> following each other. There's no, nobody speaking. Library. If you drop it, yeah, it's like really nobody speaking. Everybody is like wow. following a certain line. Wow. It's very, so, mm. how was, so, so it's different. like the opposite of America, basically. Yes. Mm. Yeah. There's so much into culture. They don't yeah. want to like, even mm. big, she tells me like because she's a bit her, her height her height is like a, like a normal average Japanese they're a bit short yeah but she's like a, above mm. average for mm. the Japanese she mm. used to be outcasted because of that wow yeah just because of the height just a little bit she's just <laughs> this, imagine this yeah. Not, yeah 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 my and kids is, my kids mm. my kids they 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 they're like they, they look more Japanese of course than Arab mm. but in Japan they call them half they're half they just call they're them half. Mm. half. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean they're half people, Yanni? <laughs> I don't, half, 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 half complete. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, they're oh. very like oh. too much. And I guess that's you know in Japan there's not many many foreigners. I heard like they don't. They're yes. not that. I mean, it happens. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's more accepted. But they're quite by, a closed uh, off country, right? In terms yeah. of they don't like to bring immigrants in. 
Yeah, but right. Americans are so, somehow more accepted because you know they're 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 yeah. occupiers. Yeah, so the history, Americans. Yeah. yeah, it's it's known uh, it's known that a lot of Americans marry into <laughs> Japanese. Yeah, yeah, but because... yeah, it's it's not. That would stop. That would uh, allow the culture to con to continue as well. Because if foreigners yeah. came, a lot of foreigners came, they exactly. would break all of these rules. Yeah. And, even yeah. even the the kids. Let's say my kids. Let's say for example, uh, for the sake of an argument, they want to uh, work in Japan. They will not be ha having proper opportunities because they're not complete. They're half. The yeah, they're yeah. half. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. And I know a lot of a lot of Japanese have. Like I, I, I got to know quite a few Japanese uh, who are married to Jordanians mm. in Jordan mm. and they went to Japan to work. The most they could really get out of from Japan as a job is like working a, on a line, you know, the factory line. That's mm. it. Wow. So because you've never there's been a lot of Japan? competition. Mm. Yeah? You've never been to Japan? No. no. Mm. Uh, Why not? Maybe not um, I'm not interested. Scared. <laughs> Scared of all the rules. <laughs> <laughs> You're too I mean, much the, of a rebel. There wasn't, there wasn't much of an opportunity, I guess. You know? Okay. <laughs> so, how did you meet her parents? Did they go to Jordan or Thailand? Uh, or? The first, uh, actually, we met. Uh, we met quite a few times, but it was on different occasions. So, the first time uh, I met first with her mother when I had my first born in Thailand. So, in mm. Thailand, I had Asher. Mm. Uh, we had him in Thailand. She came over to help her daughter. Mm. So that's, of course, obviously I knew them over, you know, Skype and, you know, online yeah. call stuff, but really met met her uh, mm. uh, mother when, when Asa was born first. Okay. And then uh, later on when we, tra we tried it, we, we kind of like traveled quite a bit. So we met them. Sometimes we would like go to uh, Indonesia, for example, one time we, we traveled to Indonesia, I think uh, three years ago. Mm. Uh, that's that's when I had my other son with me. So we I had Asher and Bara. Mm. Uh, father and mother and sister came to to uh, to Jakarta and met us there. Yeah. And then uh, and the third time mm. uh, they came with uh, as well oh. to Jordan when I had my last born uh, son. Oh. Okay. That was uh, two years ago. Yeah. Ah, mashallah. So they like they're in constant, uh, yeah, uh, connection with us. Yeah. So, so uh, Hussein, you, you never had like a traditional Jordanian wedding then? Nope. You just had your <laughs> civil marriage thing, and that no, was... no, I went. I did the Sharia one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in in Thailand. Yeah, you did the Sharia <laughs> one, like uh, at the Mahkama, whatever it is. Uh, but in you the, didn't do a. Mahkama... You, you did Walima or. No, uh, Walima. No, no, I did. I did. I did. Did I? No, I didn't. I didn't. Mm, mm, I didn't. Okay. We were we were the only ones in in Thailand. Actually, yeah. we did kind of like a Walima. You know, this you have to make a Walima. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So they bring dates and they bring yeah, yeah. like some minimum meals. Thing. Yeah. For for the imam and the people who are witnesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that counts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, what was the your in laws' reaction to you marrying her? You know, you not being Japanese. That 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 wasn't an issue. Mm -hmm. Even and they even speak when English? she converted, no, no. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's a big deal. <laughs> I mean, um, they're they're really kind of like simple people. They they sure they're kind of like even when she uh, converted mm. and she wore the niqab, mm. they didn't they didn't comment. I mean, she, <laughs> no comment really, at they, all. <laughs> no, they, it's not for them. It's her choice. They just said it's her choice. Okay, we're fine with it. You know? But but in Japanese culture, you're not allowed to have choice. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's what that's why where her parents become a little bit different. Okay, that's wow. why she was able to be different because mm. they were a bit different. Yeah, mm. okay, that's yeah. that's the that's really the key where it started mm -hmm. with. Her, yeah. mm -hmm. And is it normal in Japanese culture, like for? Um, a lady like your wife, she left Japan. She was she went alone, I suppose, to the Gulf, right? Uh, so is yeah. that normal or that's fine? Or? It's it's uh, uh, it's it's becoming a little bit of a trend where mm. you know they're pack packing. Pack packing is is very famous in Japan. Mm. What's that? So they uh, pack packing. You know they just you know right. Oh, they, backpacking. Okay, yeah, yeah. Backpacking. Yeah, backpacking. Okay. Backpacking. Backpacking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's famous in Japan. So a lot of them they do backpacking in Japan. Uh huh. And uh, the ones who like they what they do is that they work 
for a couple of months and then they gather a little bit of money and then yeah. they start to travel around Asia. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of Japanese that they do this. I've met mm -hmm. a lot of Japanese, they do this, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was fine, like for her to leave home and travel away yeah. and all of that. Because for them, it's the same that like the American culture after 18, you, you out, out, right. out the house. You know? Okay, yeah. complete freedom. Wow. Yeah. But doesn't that clash with the idea of conforming to the values? Or once you're outside of Japan, then you don't have to conform to the values. That's one. Mm. That's one. And conforming to the values up till you're 18 in mm. terms of family. Mm -hmm. in terms of mm -hmm. family. After 18, now you're conforming to the values of society. Yes. Yes. The job, yeah. your boss. Yeah. You know, your boss becomes uh, the, the next thing, right? Mm. So it's, it, it's like stages, it's like different stages, mm -hmm. but you're still, your relationship with your, with your parents is still, you know, mm. uh, inact, mm -hmm. intact. You know? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, what I'm thinking is by you going to uh, Thailand and by your wife leaving Japan, both of you had a, a kind of a blank slate where you could start to kind of think for yourself, if you like, uh, yeah. and like, you don't have the, pre like, you know, for example, um, I don't know uh, if I if I like now I'm in Istanbul, right? If yeah. I uh, shave my beard and then I I bump into you, I'll be uh, I'll be like ashamed or whatever, or you'll be, you'll at least be like what happened or something, right? But yeah. if I go to yeah. a new country, I could just become yeah. a new person, right? Yes. So yeah. when you left, like in the Gulf, you you were still in like uh, Arab society, you you spoke yes. the language, but in uh, Thailand, it's like there's just complete freedom to be freedom. whoever you yeah. wanted to be. Is I remember there's a word I focused on it when I, it's like emancipation. You no, know? oh, emancipation. emancipation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Emancipation. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so that that was that was the situation in in Thailand, really. Yeah? Mm, it's like mm. you know, it's it's open, it's free, and uh, at the beginning it was like uh, in the negative side where yeah. like uh, I just wanted to like experience everything. Yeah. But then Subhanallah, uh, just Subhanallah, just when when you're really given the choice. Mm -hmm. You kind of like and reflect on yourself and you have the time and the mind to really think for yourself and what you really want to accomplish. Because a lot of people also, you know, they go the other way. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I met a lot of Muslims who came to Thailand. They became Buddhists. Yeah. Wow. So it could go wrong. Yeah. yeah. SubhanAllah, this is the Allah's Hidayah, you know. Mm. And uh, but but when, when you really focus on it, this is really when you when you really want to reach to something you want to accomplish, not in this dunya, this is when you really start to realize what you really need to do. Yeah. But I've really, I've met a lot of people who would, who would go the other way. Mm. And I was, I was, I was fought for, for my decision in Thailand, even mm. though it was a free country. Wow. <laughs> Some people objected the fact that uh, my wife uh, converted and she's wearing the hijab at the time, mm. yeah, it was, mm. really. What, so Muslims it, it, or, or who friends? No, no, or no. Who? Like friends, yeah, friends, mm -hmm. friends. Because obviously, for for the first uh, couple of years, we had like all kinds of like friends with different backgrounds. Yeah, so yeah. she took that decision. <clears throat> there was this. It, it, we didn't consider it a, a, a pressure because you know we didn't really care what they what they thought. But mm -hmm. uh, you would still see this opposition even mm -hmm. in those countries. Yes, mm -hmm. Okay, what, what about your parents? What did they think of, you know, you marrying non-Arab, not even Muslim at the time? They're, they're, they're happy I'm, I'm praying, you know. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so for, for them, I was something, uh, I was I was a total different person yeah. before I met her. Ah. And I'm uh, totally like, in line with a human being after meeting her. So ah. they're, they're, they're happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I suppose like they when you left Jordan, the, you were like that weirdo guy who like didn't want to go to uni. And then yes. you you kind of, you got a career, you got married, you had kids and stuff. So that for them, that's good, right? That's for like, them, yeah, for them, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yeah that's, like you went for you them, know, you went like off track, but now you're like, okay, on track. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so they're, they're really fine, you know, with kids as well. So yeah, alhamdulillah. No... You know, if you get, <laughs> if you give your parents kids, they'll be happy, I think. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was the key, you know. <laughs> <laughs> alhamdulillah. Now, what about Hussein with your kids, like r raising your kids? Uh, you know, you you don't just have Arab culture, like you're, you're just a different kind of person, I think, right? And then you have your yeah. wife's Japanese culture. So how do you, you know, 
how have you approached you know, raising your kids? But honestly, we're just sticking with what the, whatever the Sunnah and the Quran is uh, is is compliant with, right? So yeah. uh, we're focusing on Quran, we're focusing on Hadith, we're focusing on Akhlaq, and we're focusing on different <clears throat> like talents and gifts that they might uh, you know show in general. But there's no, we're not bounding them into any culture. Yeah. We're just focusing on you know we can't anyways we can't because we don't believe in these cultural aspects unless unless they go in line with 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 the religion. Yeah. So the the main focus is really is uh, you know Quran and Sunnah really. Mm. Like that's that's the culture when it comes to to the kids. You know? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, of course you have culture, right? Because uh, for example, the uh, the way you show respect that's culture, right? We don't have it defined in yeah. the Sunnah per se. How do you show respect in Japan? They might like do a bow mm. or something. In Arab culture, it might be a different way. You stand up when they walk in the room, for example. So these things are culture as well, right? Like, but what? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So what's your feeling in terms I of think, I think... the influences on your kids? Is it coming more from the Arab culture or what? Or you know. It could be it could be more more of a, the Arab aspect because you know the Japanese culture, a lot of the aspects. Let's say, for example, the bowing is not mm. something that is compliant with with the religion, so mm. they don't yeah. do it, right? True. So mm. they don't do it. They don't know it. They might have heard about it or asked about it. So what we try to do is that we explain to them uh, what their for example grandparents uh, follow and mm. you know what we need to do so that they kind of like follow the religion mm -hmm. you know in terms of dawah and stuff mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there's a lot of aspects in the arab culture that is actually derived from the religion of course so yeah. that we, we would we would stick and enforce that basically yeah. mm -hmm. but i but till now i didn't really see any kind of like if you look at them and uh, what they do I still think there's not much of a cultural influence in them. Yeah, it's more of really a religious mm, uh, yeah. influence. Mm. So that's what that's what they know. So yeah. we're mm. not, especially here now in Turkey yeah. as well. You know? I can understand that because uh, you're obviously you grew up in Jordan, but then you kind of rebelled against the normal way of doing things there. Um, yes. Your wife kind of the same. And now you're you're not even in one of those countries. You're in another country, Turkey. So <laughs> there's no you, you can't have uh, much of a culture. Do you, do you kind of worry about that ever in terms of your kids having friends and seeing seeming strange? Or uh, I think I think uh, what what I'm trying to focus on is there's just to have them know what's good for them and what's bad for them, and so that they can make the proper choice when it comes to like friends. I think I'm I still think they're still a bit young for that anyways yeah but uh, they're kind of like forming an idea of what kind of friends that they would be hanging around with right mm -hmm. so with certain like uh, activities uh, certain like uh, also we're trying to kind of like focus with parents who have a similar uh, not background but a similar kind of like acceptance to the thought to the thought of for example homeschooling there is quite a few communities here that are pro to homeschooling, for example. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, not all of them are Muslim as well. So mm. we're kind of like getting there, but it's not really kind of like a priority yet, or yeah. it's not the highlight in mm. their life because they're kind of like now that there are three three brothers together. So, so they're kind of like discovering each other mm. with each other and, you know, going out with us and, spending most of the time with us and going to the parks. Sometimes they would interact in the parks with other kids, but it's just, you know, play, just playing. Yeah, so yeah. it's not, not much yeah. of a culture in it, you know? Yeah. What what languages do they speak or are they learning? Uh, uh, well, now well, they speak, with me, they speak Arabic, Fusha. Mm. Mm. Uh, with their mother, they speak Japanese. Mm -hmm. And uh, they kind of, they understand the English because you know me and my, his mother. <laughs> so when we, me and his mother we're speaking together yeah. in English, they know what we're talking about, but they would respond according to who they are no. speaking with. So if okay. they want to respond to their mother, they yeah. would speak in Japanese. If they no. want to respond to me, they would speak in in Arabic. And they're starting to pick up on on a little bit of of Turkish as well. Yeah, so they might have four languages, mashallah. They should, yeah. <laughs> they they should. better. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, wow, that's crazy. Because, <laughs> yeah. So in, in the house, like just naturally, very naturally, you've got three languages <laughs> in the house. Yes, yeah, mm. yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Like most of the time, I, I and it's, it became so normal. So now, for example, in the background, now I'm hearing them speaking Japanese, right? Mm. I don't understand anything, mm -hmm. but I, I, I can hear them. And once they immediately want to speak with me, they just turn into Arabic. So it's there's no like it's it's very smooth. It's, it became yeah. just very smooth. There's no yeah. there's no like contradiction mm. or anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know when you said you speak to them in Fusha, uh, you know I'm not sure myself. You know if you just grow up, you go through basic school in Jordan, would your Fusha be very good? Or did you need to work on that? Or I mean, it, it, you need to practice it. Yeah. You need to practice it, but it, it becomes becomes easy for, for mm -hmm. uh, because I made to, see this, this is another thing that I made sure to to take because um, it's it's also related to the culture and, and upbringing. See, in Arabic, in the in the slang language, uh, at least the, the Arab, the Arab uh, uh, slang language, regardless mm -hmm. where which country it is. We have, because it's very flexible, very easy to speak. So we tend to, because of the culture and the way we were up brought, there's, there's a lot of abusive language mm -hmm. in, in, in the slang. Yeah, yeah. So, and I didn't want that for my kids. So mm -hmm. that's why one of the main reasons why I, I stuck with Fusha, because Fusha, because it's not the natural language of, of my tongue, let's say, uh, it makes me think before mm -hmm. I speak. And mm. that that okay. was so essential when it came to upbringing my kids because before I get angry or whatever I blurb something wrong or something mm. I would actually think what I would be saying to them and I would say it in fusha so yeah. it comes out very clean yeah so it came a part of the upbringing uh, uh, process mm. to speak fusha so that I make sure when I speak with my children I only speak in a good way. Mm. Very yeah. good. That's one of the things that I wanted to avoid also culture, mm -hmm. which is the language as well. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know, the fourth one that's on the way, inshallah, do you know if it's a boy or a girl? Not yet, no. Mm. Inshallah, a girl <laughs> maybe, yeah? Inshallah, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Mashallah, tabarakallah. All good, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. What else do we have to go through? I just, <laughs> it's very interesting, I <laughs> say. Very interesting. <laughs> Um, I was going to say, you know, like you said about homeschooling, even yeah. I feel like homeschooling, like the type of people that would homeschool, they share yeah. certain values. I think, you know, they tend to be Definitely. the type of people who uh, think a bit outside the box. They're not worried yes. about being different. This kind of yeah. stuff, you know, like even yeah. myself, when I was in not so much in school, but when I was in uni and I went to uni a few different times, every yeah. time I was in uni, I was a weirdo. Okay. Yeah. And now I find myself being a weirdo as well, like uh, yeah. working online, not having a job um, yeah. and, and uh, like living in, uh, sorry, also considering homeschooling and stuff. Yeah. So it all comes together, I think, this whole thing of yeah. being different. And unlike you, I'm like mixed as well. Well, you're not mixed, but yeah. your kids are mixed, you know. Yeah. So and I lived in different country. You lived in it. So uh -huh. it all. Yeah. This is, I think it's a bigger, bigger section of the world is becoming like this, right? Where it's like, yeah, it's all mixed, so much mixing as well. And yeah. and this, the, the the traditional way of dealing with this with this life, whether it's the jobs, uh, education, and it's all it's all changing uh, rapidly. And the ones who are not uh, coping mm. or not uh, changing towards that, they're actually uh, suffering certain consequences. Big or small, big or small. So few people who have jobs, for example, with the coronavirus, look at what happened to the, a lot of the people who had jobs and only had one skill, uh, mm -hmm. which, is, which is in their, in their job. Yeah. They suffered. Mm -hmm. And the people who were like mm -hmm. online, for example, mm -hmm. they're on a different level or a different yeah. story for them. So certain things, I, I believe, even when it comes to homeschooling, the type of the education, like Alhamdulillah, uh, Asr, my my uh, my eldest, he's he's six years old, but alhamdulillah, he for now he has memorized five juz uh, from the Quran and a lot of hadith. In his age, usually kids in his age, they they, they absolutely know nothing mm. about about uh, memorizing Quran stuff. Even his IQ level in terms of like uh, general knowledge, 
his uh, hand skills, the way he uh, like prescribes things, understand certain things is totally different because he's not bound to the textbook. Yeah. Right? He, he even, he's, st- he's not yet in an age of a schooling yeah. and yet he's alhamdulillah set on a certain path where he inshallah, he, I'm, what, that, what, I'm, what I'm, I think for homeschooling, what I'm trying to focus mainly is, is give the religious, that my responsibility as a father is to give him the religion. That's yeah. that's what I'll be asked about in mm-hmm. in, in, in Akhira and Yom mm-hmm. Qiyamah. Uh, whatever, everything, anything else, that's for him to discover and for me to support, mm-hmm. which is whatever skill he would be developing, uh, uh, regardless of. Uh, but for, it's for me to just guide and support and not enforce. That's that's what I believe as as a father is my part mm-hmm. when it comes to his education. Mm-hmm. As a core education, what I need to enforce, kind of like so to speak is the religion that's what i not to enforce I, I don't like to really like uh, but that that's my responsibility but yeah. otherwise uh, for him he needs to discover his path by him and me of course being his father i need to like pick up on whatever uh, gifts i would see in him and try to develop it and encourage it in him inshallah mm, inshallah uh, what brings you to turkey then hussein like why did you think it was good to come here I think I think it's uh, well, first of all because it's a Muslim country, obviously, and it's something different from the Arab norm. Uh, there's you know in this country you see you feel like they have uh, they have a say they 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 produce they uh, you know when 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 you're living in a country, I lived in countries like in the Arab world where countries we're consumers we don't produce there's no production there's no intellect you don't feel like there's intellect. Uh, uh, and it's it's always dependent on other countries, so yeah. you always feel poor, even if you have money. Mm. But we, 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 I think it's uh, this is something you probably know better living in the UK and stuff. When you're living in a country that produces its own, regardless medicine, they have mm. factories, they produce their own weapons, whatever. There is a certain uh, how you say confidence mm. when it comes to that country that mm. is reflected on the people itself. Mm. And I wanted to feel that, but not in the West. I didn't want to live in a non-Muslim country. I wanted masjids. I wanted, you know, I wanted that aspect, but at the same time, I didn't want, I wanted something in the middle. And subhanAllah, yeah. Turkey came in, in the right position. Uh, not only that, but the culture, the food as well, the the the, 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 the variety of, you know, the, the landscapes, the parks, the the flexibility with the kids and also the residency that completed it. You know, it's, mm. it's very easy to get a residency here. So these kind of things uh, really, and of course it's it's relatively cheap compared to any other country I, I, I lived in. Mm. So it's really a lot of aspects that made me really see Turkey as actually the only option for me now, mm. really. And you were in Jordan before you came here? Yeah, I, I mm. stayed in Jordan uh, just before I came to Turkey. I stayed for like uh, four years, actually. Okay, so uh, just yeah. fill 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 me uh, the gap in for me from when you were in uh, Thailand till when you went to Jordan before going to Turkey. What where did you live? Was it just Thailand, or you went other places? After Thailand, mm-hmm. I came back to Jordan, mm-hmm. and but I was on and off. So I went back to Jordan, stayed for, like for a year. Then I came back to Thailand again. I tried to open a business, but that didn't work so well. So I went back to Jordan again, and then I went uh, and uh, left, lived in Indonesia. Mm. Okay. I lived in Indonesia for almost like six months. I wanted to even stay there and, and, and live there, but I had an issue with the residency. It was so hard to get a residency. Really? You have to open mm. a business, and it was so hard. So I eventually I decided, okay, just let me go back to Jordan. Mm. and figure things out uh, again mm-hmm. and this is when uh, like uh, two years later uh, I, I uh, you know Turkey came into mm. picture basically yeah. mm. I, I never actually I never considered it mm. when I was between Thailand and Indonesia and, and Jordan and all these destinations Turkey was absolutely not in my mind at all I I, I, I didn't know anything about it actually mm. Mm. Uh, but then, subhanAllah, well, with the Syrian uh, refugee problem, you know, Turkey started to be more in the picture and we start to hear more about it. And there's there's a lot of people who suffered in Jordan from the consequences and 
they started to go to Turkey. So mm. this this going to Turkey trend started to be you know more uh, mm. obvious. Yeah. So I, I said okay, I, I'll investigate it, and Subhanallah, it became it mm. became the option. <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> Um, okay, I was saying we will wrap up. I have one last question for you, which might be useful for people who, you know, people yeah. like in the UK, for example, they're Muslim, uh, they don't know Arabic. Obviously, knowing yeah. Arabic is a big part of the religion. It's a big yeah. help for you, etc. Yeah, uh, and I think you said your wife speaks Arabic, right? So, like, yeah, alhamdulillah, yes. how, how did she learn? Was it just the immersion in Jordan? Or? It's, it's, it's practice. It's mainly practice. It started with, uh, you know, uh, the good thing about, you know, it, learning Arabic from the Quran is pretty pretty hard it's 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 not it's not as flexible really but the hadith subhanallah uh, the prophet's uh, words because they're very precise and very accurate and very describable you know it, mm. it describes one word describes a lot of things yeah so she, she her study of the because you know she's a new muslim and she wanted to to understand the religion and as a japanese when she she picks up on something she has to perfect it she has to do you know she has to follow mm. certain things so you know focusing on the hadith and the words of the hadith were were an aspect where it helped with with understanding the language but mainly fundamentally really it's it's practicing the, mm. the language with somebody mm. else so mm. speaking it, it really helps her mm. stay in jordan when we came back to jordan we stayed there for around like three four years mm. after after the whole just before just before Turkey, mm. that helped her a lot because she was able to communicate on a daily basis with my mother, with my oh. father, with myself as well. Oh. You know, I wouldn't have more opportunity to speak Arabic, like in Thailand, like I wasn't able to speak it in, in Jordan, of course, mm. because I was speaking with my mother, my wife, my father. So she practice really is, mm. is mainly practice that mm. gets it. So, mm. You know, focus on the on the hadith, yeah, and then you know practice. Okay. That's that's interesting, yeah. And even so, practice could even be having an online teacher that you just read to and you speak to. Definitely, yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Even even if it's like a, the slang level, because even the slang is is pretty pretty much you know Arabic. You know? Yeah, it's linked. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah but practice mm. is the best. Yeah. Mm, great. Okay, Jazakallah Khair and Hussein. We'll wrap up now because <laughs> Maghrib, like you said. So, so uh, thanks, Khairan, Hussein. Khairan. Thanks. It's really interesting. Okay. And I think we went like 100 miles an hour. So <laughs> yeah. if, if anyone has uh, uh, questions, like follow-up questions, then just uh, ask us. You can go to mindheistpodcast.com. You have anonymous a way of asking questions, and then you could just email us as well. And yes. then maybe if we get some questions, we can bring Hussein on again to answer those yeah. questions about, sure. you know... Uh, being uh, an outcast about learning languages, about <laughs> interracial marriage, everything. <laughs> MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks, Hussein. Subhanakallah, wa bihamdik, shadu wa na'ala, anta, astaghfirullah, wa alaikum wa rahmatullah.